If everybody would take their seat, I think we need to get the, uh, the, the show on the road. There's a, there's a whole lot of name tags out there that have yet to be picked up, so don't feel like you're that alone. You will be joined soon, I hope. But, but I think we have to stay on schedule as best as we possibly can. Uh, before we get started, uh, my name is Rob Wegley. I'm, I'm chair of the Department of Personal Financial Planning here at the University of Missouri. And, and I would like to make a few introductions before I go much farther. The first I'd like to introduce is our dean, Dean Jorgensen, uh, who's back here in the back. Uh, Steve, Steve, in fact, says that he's got the best job in the university. Uh, I, I, you know, I thought of a line that I would like to use to parallel that. I think I've probably got the most important job in the university. Uh, because financial literacy, as we look across the United States, as we look across the world, is a, is a huge gap. Uh, and we need to have people need a whole lot more than what they know now in order to, 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 to if you will, to try to correct the mess that we're in. And as John Qualley and I were talking about last night, John's going to be speaking to you soon, is like the whole world's in a mess, but at least our mess is the best mess that we got going. So it's still up to us to try to clean this up. Other people that are here that I'd like for you, that I believe that are here, I'm not exactly sure where they are because it, it's not because the crowd's so dense, probably because I'm not sure where they're sitting. Uh, members of our board of advisors, Jim, Jim Dorch, you in here, Jim? Jim's back here, president of Smith Moore & Company. Uh, Kent Scorney was going to come back today, but I don't think Kent has gotten here yet. Larry Fuller from Shelter Insurance is over here. Uh, Mike English from the Missouri Council of Economic Education was going to come down today back from Kansas City, and I don't see him yet here. He's got a young baby. David Keller from the Bank of Missouri is, is back here. Uh, so again, I thank them. We had a board meeting yesterday that was one of the most, in, in, in the, it was the most exciting one I think we've had in years. Um, the sponsors that we have here that have, that have helped us put this together uh, are listed within your program. Let me at least mention them quickly. Uh, U.S. Bank's Private Client Reserve uh, has, has helped us, Shelter Insurance, Missouri Council on Economic Education, State Farm Insurance, MasterCard, Smith Moore & Company, Mid-Missouri Estate Planning Council, the Bank of Missouri, the Society of Financial Service Professionals, the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors, uh, Mr. Craig Kurth, uh, who works with Waldell and Reed, is also on our board of advisors, and Dr. and Mrs. Craig Israelson. It's the first time we've had a speaker uh, that has actually donated money uh, to help pull this baby off, uh, so, which, is, which is fine. Uh, the, the other people that I think I would like to point out to you uh, is, is uh, our faculty, and I hope to God they're here. Uh, uh, Ryan Law. Uh, Ryan Law is the director of our, of our Office for Financial Success and, and, and the director of the University of Missouri Center for Economic Education. Uh, very important part of our, of our experiential ed ed education operation, part of our, of our, of our department. Uh, is, is, Lucy, is Lucy here? Lucy's not here yet. Well, Brenda Proctor is, is right here. She's with our Extension Division. Uh, Andrew Zumwalt is over here. Uh, Ray Yao, I think, is in the back back here, and sitting next to Ray is Tanzo Yomazir, uh, who's on our faculty. Starla Ivey, who this whole thing wouldn't have been able to happen without. Starla, I saw you a second ago. Where are you? Oh, she's walking around in the hallway. So we'll get her when she walks in. Um, Deanna Sharp is up here in the front, a longtime colleague that goes way back with all of us. Uh, Veronica Bonaparte, uh, our administrative associate. And Trish Whitehill, is Trish here? Okay, and there's, and there's Starla Ivy at the back. Just wave, wave Starla so everybody sees you that you're not late getting here. Uh, there's, there's been some people come in the room that I, I personally would like to recognize because these are faculty members that I either worked with or, or they're responsible for me standing here at the podium as I, as I am at the moment. Uh, Barb Slusher was a member of our faculty several years ago up here in the front. And at the end of the row here, uh, uh, Ed Metzen was chair of the department forever uh, before, before I uh, took over the reins uh, several years ago. And sitting to his right is uh, Gordon Bivens, who uh, when I was a senior in university, I met in his office one day while I was working on a term paper. And by the time I left, he handed me graduate school application forms. And when I took a job here in 1984, I moved into his old office. So that's, uh, that's I owe a lot to this man, uh, or he owes a lot to me. I'm not sure which way this goes some days. But uh, working for the University of Missouri is a... Uh, has been a trying experience, those of us that know how the budgets work around here. But it, this is a great job and a very important job, which, which is why it is that we do it. Uh, students that are here from the department, graduate students, undergraduate students, stand up just so people know that you're here. Uh, yeah. 
and back here are some. Every one of them are looking for work. Uh, so if, if, if you have a job, uh, please, please, please call on them. A um, couple of other things I'd like to say before I introduce Nikki Krawitz to welcome you to the university, and this is for a reminder, which I'll probably have to do this often. If you signed up to get continuing education credits, make sure you turn in the little card that says you're getting continuation credits to one of the students at the doors in between the sessions. Each one of the sessions are going to be 50 minutes long. Most speakers, I imagine, will take, let's say, 40 minutes with 10 minutes for Q&A. If you have a question or something you want to say, that's what these microphones are for. We will not get you recorded unless you're at the microphone, so please use the microphones if you've got questions that you would like to ask or a statement or clarification that you would, you know, that you in fact seek. Uh, the breaks will be 10 minutes, so please try to get back, but I, you know, being a, I turn, turning 60 years old last week, I know it's important for people to be able to take a break. Uh, <laughs> So uh, we will be having breaks every 50 minutes, just like class time, man. So this is the university. We're going to use the 50-minute time period. Uh, I think I've got uh, everybody introduced that I wanted to introduce. I didn't tell you much about our department, but I can tell you that things are going pretty well. And I'm pretty excited about what the future looks. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, just put it this way. Personal financial planning is needed. So as long as we're needed, I got a job. And uh, as long as I got a job, I can feed myself and take a few trips and try to make a difference, so that's what it's about. <laughs> I'm happy today to have Nikki Krawitz, who's Vice President of Finance and Administration for the University of Missouri system, the four campus system. Uh, in, in her current position, Nikki manages about $6.5 billion uh, for the university. Uh, that includes the budget for all the university, $1 billion worth of endowment, $2.8 billion worth of retirement trust fund, which I hope she manages that very, very, very well, because that's important to me as well. I'm getting closer and closer. Uh, she, under, under, under Nikki's direction are the offices of the Treasury, Accounting, Procurement, Facilities Planning and Development, Real Estate, Internal Audit, Risk and Insurance Management, and Institutional Research Functions. She currently serves on the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities Board of Directors and the Council on Business Affairs Executive Committee. Uh, she's a member of the Advisory Board of the School of Accountancy here at the University of Missouri, which is, in fact, one of the top ten accountancy programs in the country. Uh, she she uh, does workshops on higher education budgeting and finance uh, for the American Council on Education. She's authored several papers, and she's a distinguished business officer. Uh, she received the Distinguished Business Officer Award, and I'm guessing at what this acronym means, but I'm guessing it's the National Association of College and University Business Officers, which would be a, just a pretty good guess here. Uh, she's on the board of, the, of our one of our local institutions, Stevens College, uh, and the board of directors of Landmark Bank, one of, one of our fine local institutions. Uh, she's a member of the City of Columbia TIF Commission. She holds her AB degree from Washington University, an MA degree from Teachers College, which is at Columbia University, and her MS is in Accountancy from the University of Missouri of Columbia. She is a CPA, and please join me in welcoming Nikki to the podium. Thanks, Rob, for your very uh, nice introduction. Uh, on behalf of the president uh, of the university, Tim Wolf, and Chancellor Brady Deaton, I want to welcome you all, those of you who are not at the University of Missouri, to the flagship campus of the university. Uh, as many of you know, the, re the university is the research, doctoral granting, land grant university of the state of Missouri. We have four campuses, the flagship campus here, two urban campuses, one in St. Louis and one in Kansas City, and our technological university in Rolla, Univer Missouri University of Science and Technology, a health system in mid-Missouri that is part of Mizzou. In total, we served 72,000 students with almost half of them on this campus. Our impact is felt in every county in the state through our statewide extension service. And like most large public research universities, we are a complex organization in terms of the services we provide and our funding. We educate students, we deliver health care, we operate housing facilities, restaurants, and other dining facilities, we operate farms, radio and TV stations, we entertain the public with sporting and cultural events, we do research, we patent and commercialize faculty discoveries, we operate camps for youth, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. This year, we have a $2.7 billion budget, 
And since 2001, state support for the University of Missouri has gone from providing over half of the operating budget to less than a third, and as a percent of the total budget, from 27% to 15%. Students, therefore, are picking up a greater and greater share of the cost of their education. The other large sources of revenue are from patient care, housing, dining, and other auxiliaries, and research funding. As the saying goes, we were originally state supported, then we became state assisted, and now we are on the road to being just state located. In addition to the budget, our investment portfolio totals over six point, well, the, the investment part of it is 5.5 billion, and we have a debt portfolio of 1.4 billion with a cost of capital of around 3%. The University of Missouri prides itself on its financial stewardship. Don't let anyone tell you that the tuition increases came from the inefficiencies at the University of Missouri. That's hardly the case. We receive the same amount of funding today in nominal terms from the state that we received in 2001, and we are educating 17,000 more students. The University of Missouri is educating 37% more full-time equivalent students with 2% fewer resources in nominal dollars and 24% fewer resources adjusting for inflation. So if that's not efficiency, I'm not sure what is. Over the past 10 years, the cost per FT full-time equivalent student to educate has decreased 1.4% in nominal dollars from about 15,271 to about 15,052 dollars, but inflation adjusted dollars, the cost to educate has decreased 22 percent. So over the past three years alone, the university has documented cost savings of 190 million dollars. As we look to the future, one of our biggest challenges is creating a sustainable business model that ensures access and affordability for students, protects the quality of our education, research, and outreach endeavors, and yet relies less on state support and more on other revenue sources. This is a challenge to public higher education throughout our nation. We are on the road, we think, to accomplishing this through expanded private support, entrepreneurial activity, traditional and online enrollment growth, expanded e-learning initiatives, and administrative efficiencies. The financial challenges facing higher education in general, and the University of Missouri in particular, are not unlike the financial challenges facing uh, our states and the nation, and in fact, the, our global society that we read about in the news every day. We have a growing demand for financial resources, and those financial resources are shrinking. How do we manage with the resources that are available? The same is true for our students. On the front page of USA Today yesterday, I happened to be traveling, and at my hotel this was the front page, if you didn't see it, the headline article right here, if you can't see it, it says, the cost of financial illiteracy. Millennials are just the latest generation to struggle with dollars and cents, yet this enduring national problem isn't getting any better. The article goes on to say that studies show that a majority of young people in the United States today have poor financial literacy, a trend that has been consistent over the last decade and shows few signs of improving." Unquote. Yet the article states that the average student loan debt for, 2010, for the 2010 class was $25,000. Average credit card debt for 20 to 29-year-olds is $1,800 with an unemployment rate of 12.4 percent, and only 40 percent of 18 to 34-year-olds keep a budget. 
Our Department of Personal Finance at MU is doing a number of things to try to address this issue. The department runs the Office for Financial Success, a peer financial counseling center where it provides free financial counseling for MU students, which helps them cope with not only higher tuition bills, but the higher cost of living, the lifestyle that they've taken on uh, as part of being students. And I, and I say that because tuition is only a, a part of what students incur as part of their educational experience today, particularly if they're on-campus students. They live in residence halls or apartments that have and typically have single rooms and at the most double rooms with private bathrooms. They bring automobiles to school. They have iPods and iPads and iPhones. And all of this has a cost associated with it, not to speak of the cost to be, belong to recreation centers and the, um, the, the sort of student lifestyle. Because more students drop out of school for financial reasons than academic, the kind of financial advising that the Office for Financial Success provides is critically important to their success and to our success in graduating more students. The program also performs financial literacy outreach to the campus, support for high school personal finance teachers, and Missouri Tax, its version of a volunteer income tax assistance program. That, the latter program generates about $2 million in refunds and $500,000 in saved tax preparation fees for the low income of Boone County. And those numbers are doubled through our, the extension work across Missouri. So this department has an economic impact, about $15 million uh, if you use the standard multiplier of three. And this is one way that our university, and this department in particular, give students their money back from the supplemental fees that the department charges them to uh, uh, support its activities. This department also has the second largest number of certified financial planner registered degree and certificate options. That's after Texas Tech. And has among its goals to expand internationally through a focus on China and through online educational efforts to other Missouri two and four year schools. Although a small operation in staff, I think Rob could, would tell you that, the department's accomplishments are great in terms of its programs and impact on the students and the people of Missouri. So in closing, welcome to the University of Missouri and to the MU campus. What each of you do and what the department do is critically important to the future of our country. The US News article quotes experts as saying, whether they're learning about managing money or not, at home or in school, the lack of financial savvy among millennials could have a trickle-down effect with detrimental consequences for our society. Uh, thank you, and have a great day, and enjoy your conference.